an impromptu running on air video. This one's slightly different in that it's a sort of extra to something that's already been covered. This was prompted by a comment on the waveforms video. So the comment that was uh, left by Vaholda Bear. I have several different CZs and a hardware oscilloscope hooked up. I was always impressed just how accurate the waveforms are, including the square wave. Are you sure you didn't forget about the DCW sustain? Sounds and looks like you have a slight envelope there, but not quite up to value 99 on sustain, thus resulting in a square sine wave modulation. Uh, so, so to answer that question, um, uh, I'm pretty certain that the envelope isn't a problem. Um, but uh, it certainly was worth checking some other settings. Maybe there was something else I missed. Yeah, I was surprised by the result as well. So it's definitely worth digging into this a bit deeper. Yeah, so I didn't quite get that right. And I've worked out what the problem is. It's just one of the settings in the synth and it's something that we've not looked at yet. So it's kind of useful to uh, look at that. So what I'm going to do is just very quickly go through the waveforms again. I'm not going to go into the spectral side. So let's see if they now look the way they should now have found out my original mistake. So this is the patch um, I was using and then I adapted that to, um, to show the different waveforms. So I'm just going to go through that process again and then you'll be able to see what I missed out. So first of all, we need to have a look at um, the envelopes. So I'm going to go to the uh, level envelope and I want it to be on sustain straight away. And then go up to step two and put it on end. So there we go. So it never decays away until I actually let go of the key. So that's good. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the um, the envelope for the waveform. So we want again rate 99 sustain, um, and then we want the level to go all the way up to 99, step up, end. Okay, and I'm just going to check the waveform. Okay, so the waveform is on waveform 1, which is a sawtooth. Okay, so another thing that would help actually is if there's no vibrato. So let's take the depth off of that. So it's straight. Uh, in actual fact, it looks a lot more like uh, a ramp wave now, but it's got that curious curve at the bottom. So, what did I get wrong? Well, first of all, you need to check the velocity, because if the velocity is engaged and you're not pressing the keyboard hard enough, then you're not going to get the full waveform. So let's quickly check that. So go over to the velocity, and we can see on the waveform it's set to 2, so that is definitely having an effect. The other thing is the key follow. This is a function which is common to a lot of synthesizers. And the idea is that you don't necessarily want the sound to be equally bright across the entire keyboard, because then quite often you find that the higher notes are really bright and the lower notes um, are fine. You know, that tends to be the way it works. You really you want it to sort of back off a little bit when you get to the higher notes. So in this case, we've got the key follow on four. So if we take that down, and strangely enough, we still have that sort of curved shape. Okay, that seems a little more stable. And you can see it still doesn't really look very um, ramp-like. If I start going up the octaves, it starts to look a bit more familiar.
And there we have something that really looks like a sawtooth. It's still got a bit of a curb on it. So it's not exactly the same. But as you go further down, you get this strange curve at the bottom. Um, I don't know why it looks like that. It's, it's very it's very strange that there's such a big difference between maybe down here and up there. So at this point I went and reviewed the waveforms again and those that were played at the higher parts of the keyboards look fine and when you went to the lower part of the keyboard they didn't and I was thinking well you know maybe this is a, a quirk of the keyboard um, that it just happens to work like that but I felt some sort of nagging doubt about that and really felt that there was something else going on here. So after doing a bit more research on the web uh, I found this document which discussed um, square waves and how they could be tilted as a result of filtering and I thought about that I thought well I don't have any filtering going on and then I realized well actually potentially I do because the way I've got it set up at the moment is the keyboard goes into a mixer and I'm taking a feed from a mixer which goes into the sound card which eventually goes into the computer. Now there are certain places where you could easily have some kind of filtering going on. Actually, to explain that filtering perhaps in, in more depth then. So what happens with the filtering is that it introduces a phase shift at the lower frequencies and not the higher frequencies. So it doesn't affect the sound of the um, waveform as such, but it does affect the way it looks. That's one of the things that's quite confusing about it. Now, the effect of any filtering like that is only going to be apparent at the low frequencies where the filtering is taking place, and at the higher frequencies it won't be, which is why when you play further up the keyboard, it looks fine. At that point I was thinking, well, where could I be introducing some kind of filter phase shift effect? And the most obvious place is the mixer. So I'm taking the signal from the keyboard, it goes into the mixer, the mixer goes into the sound card, and then it's captured. So if I think about the mixer, it's the, the most likely cause because the mixer has got EQ on it and you can't disable it. You can, you can set the dials to a midpoint for bass, mid and treble, but that's not the same as having it disabled and that will introduce a phase shift even if it isn't doing anything else. So that's the most likely thing. Now the other thing was, could there be a problem with the software? Could there be something with the sound card. That's but was more difficult for me to work that one out and then because really I need some kind of control um, I need a hardware oscilloscope and then I remembered I'd built an oscilloscope as a, a cheap kit and uh, I've never really used it so it's a good time to get the thing out and see if there's any differences. Okay, so I've got two feeds. I've got a left and right output from the keyboard. So one of them is going the way that it always has done, which is through the mixer and the sound card. And the other one is going direct into the hardware scope. Bear in mind, it's a very cheap scope. And uh, we can then compare the differences. Okay, so let's start off with the, uh, the low notes. And uh, I think you can see there, there's an incredible, incredibly distorted waveform coming from the um, software. And, um, but if you look at the, the scope, you can see, okay, well, 
it's a square wave and it's got the slopes on it which still indicates that there's some kind of phase um, problem going on there but it's far less pronounced um, and if we go up an octave then it's even less pronounced um, on both of them. Okay, so you can see it's almost a perfect um, square wave. It's a very noisy scope. It seems to pick up a lot of digital noise, but you can see on the screen that we've still got very sort of pronounced phase issues, but at least it is approaching a square wave, whereas on the scope it is a square wave. So I'm just going to go through the waveforms again. This one we've already seen, so number one, which is the ramp, and you've still got a bit of a slope at the bottom. Um, I reckon we've still got a bit of um, phase issues going on in the base there. At this point, I've cut out the mixer on both devices. It's going directly from the keyboard through a lead, either into the sound card or going directly into the scope. So let's go up to the square wave. This time I'll start on the top. Um, and you can see it's square, but it's rounded off, which is what you tend to expect of the higher frequencies anyway, um, simply because of the audio range. Um, but if we go further down, it gets squarer, but we also start to get that tilt coming in. Again, you've got the tilt, and it's a very similar amount on both of them, so uh, it's an interesting thing. Let's go through these a bit more. So, there we have our pulse, and uh, yeah, looks fine. Yeah, I mean, I don't see anything to really criticize on that one. Uh, this is quite interesting. So, the sine wave with the pulse. Now I think really at the lower frequencies this really is quite different from what is on the front panel. At the high frequencies it seems to match up a lot better. So with this one it seems like the pulse always remains the same width. It doesn't seem to change in relation to the frequency of the waveform. You tend to expect to look the same throughout whatever note it's being played, but it looks very much like the, the pulse is this wide and it's always this wide whether you're playing a high note or whether you're playing a low note, which is quite an unusual thing. Okay, let's go up to the next one. So this is the half square half sign. And yeah, I guess that's kind of what we've got there. Yeah, it's, it's, that's very similar to what's on the front panel, so that's, that's fine. Okay, and I'll just quickly go up into the resonant ones. And uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's actually nothing wrong with this. I'm just going to do the ones in the middle. Um, now, let's, let's have a look. Number six. Okay. And number seven. So I think all three of those are almost perfect. It doesn't seem to be affected by this low frequency issue. So I, th I suppose what I've taken from that is I'm glad those questions were asked because it's given me the opportunity to just sort of double check what I've found. And I've realized that you can't be absolutely certain um, using, certainly using the equipment that I've got. It's not like I've, I've got some kind of electronics lab here. It's, some basic equipment gives you some basic ideas, but sometimes it's just not good enough to give you an exact 
representation of what's going on. Okay, so thanks for watching that. Got to the end of it eventually. So I'm going to be covering ring modulation, noise modulation in the next one. So it should be a little bit more sound design focused and perhaps a little less techy. But I think it's definitely worth going through this stuff anyway. So if you've enjoyed it, leave a like. Um, and uh, if you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing and hopefully catch up with you on the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.